Hello everybody and welcome to this 19th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about JSON processing and how it's a text-based data exchange format that is widely used in many web services and derives itself from JavaScript. Now JSON syntax looks exactly like this. JSON has either objects or arrays as its data structures. Arrays hold more objects or arrays inside them. So these objects are composed of name value pairs called, let's say right here in this example, there is first name, and this name uh, holds a value called Duke. And you can also have arrays, which are basically um, just these objects inside another object. So this phone numbers holds on to this array of mobile and home phone numbers. Then there's the uses of J uh, JSON, which is widely used now in web communication, especially in RESTful web services. It is, has a much more compact and easily readable and writable kind of code than other representations. Now, generating and parsing JSON data. First, there's the object model that parses JSON data like a tree in memory that can be navigated, analyzed, or modified. This approach is the most flexible, but it's slower than the streaming model because it navigates the entire tree at once. While the streaming model is very fast in its processing because it processes the data from event to event, discarding data it no longer needs. This approach is most useful when local processing is needed and information is not needed from the rest of the data. Then let's take a look at the object model API. We'll be talking about creating an object model from JSON data, creating an object model from application code, navigating an object model and writing an object model to a stream. So first of all, creating an object model from JSON data. So in this example over here, you can see that the JSON ST reference over here, um, this is the reference object that represents the top of the tree and can be used to navigate the tree and write it to a stream as JSON data. Now to create an object from application data. Over here in this example, you can see that first, you can see that this uh, object right here represents the top of the tree. And for every dot add, you add a name value pair to this um, object model. And then finally, you build the object model and then you finally create the object model at the end. Next, there's navigating an object model, which um, is composed of this block of text, which first of all, it has a method that has navigate tree and it takes two values a JSON element and a key. So what this does is it first identifies the element as either an object, array, a string, a number, truth or false or null. And then by, uh, by doing that, then it finds out which kind of object it is. Now let's take a look at what the output of that would have been. Let's say if it was an object, it would have been the key of first name and the string of Duke key of age, number 18, and so on and so on. Next, there is writing an object model to a stream, which uh, first of all, the object models we've created can also be written to a stream. You can uh, also use the try with resources uh, way to write it if you have a Java version of seven or higher. So first of all, what you'll see here is you first um, create your string writer, your st JSON writer, your, then you write the object, right? And then you close your JSON writer so you don't have to have any problem with leaked resources. And then you can create a string JSON data and you write this um, ST writer to a string and then you print out this JSON data. Now this will output this following where you can have um, it printing out the JSON data. Next, let's use the streaming API, which is, uh, well, you can read JSON data using a parser, or you can write JSON data using a generator. So first of all, reading JSON data using a parser. This block of code is basically telling us first that you have to obtain a parser, which here it does. It iterates over the parser events, so it goes ahead and goes to the next part of the parser, and it performs the local processing for each and every element. Then there's writing JSON data using a generator. This code shows how to generate a JSON file using the streaming API. It first obtains a parser instance again, and then goes ahead and writes all the stuff into JSON data. Now let's take a look at the output of that. It would have been first the key name, which is our first name, 
Valley string, then duke, and so on of the end of the until the end of the array and end and the end of the object. Now let's take a look at um, everything that we've seen and into this JSONP model. Okay, so now that we're inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead and right click and open project, and let's navigate all the way to our JSONP and JSONP model. So this example will demonstrate how to create an object model from form data, how to parse JSON data, and how to write JSON data using the object model API. Okay, so the first thing that I want to um, divert to your intention to is this index.xhtml, which simply has a form to collect information from you, the user. So what it does is it asks for your first name, last name, age, street address, city, state, zip code, phone number, one, phone number two, and asks you to validate that by saying create a JSON object. And then it will go ahead and call the object bottle bean, which will be down here in our source packages. Double click that and you can see our object model bean over here. This lovely bean is a managed bean, which is a session scoped managed bean that stores the data from the form and directs the navigation between the facelit pages that you've seen. And this file also contains code that uses the JSON object model API. So what it does is it then directs all that information to this model created.xhtml, which simply has a text area that displays the JSON data before it is parsed. And this finally leads to your parse json.xhtml, which finally shows you a table that and shows the elements of the object model creation. Now that you get all that, let's go ahead and start our server. So double or right click your Glassfish server and click start. Once that's done up, let's go ahead and build our project. And once you have that built, let's go into our Google Chrome and paste this link over here, localhost 8080 JSON P model. And you are introduced to this information right here. So let's replace this. So my name is not Duke. My name is Viprov and my last name is programming, definitely programming. And uh, my age is actually 16. I live on 123 some street. Mississauga, Ontario, and my zip code is 12345. Phone number, let's keep that as the same, and let's create our JSON object. So you will see that JSON is represented just like this. So you got your um, object, this is your object, and it will contain a name and a value. A name and a value, and over here is your array, which also contains a name and a value as well. So let's go ahead and parse this JSON and you now have um, an object model tree which shows a table of your JSON data represented in a table format. And that's all this example does. It basically shows you how JSON looks like when it's being parsed through and once it's done parsing what it looks like when you parse it back into um, stuff that you can read. All right, so now that we're back in our NetBeans, let's go ahead and clean this so we don't have any background files and close this guy. Now that we're done with that example, let's go ahead to our JSONP streaming example application, which is basically the same thing except we'll be using the streaming API. Inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead and open our project and click the JSONP streaming. And like I said, this demonstrates a similar show of what we saw previously, but in this case, we'll be using the streaming API instead. So the first thing, let's take a look at our index.xhtml, which is simply um, a page that contains a form to collect information, just like the previous one. And then there's the file written.xhtml, which contains a text area that displays the JSON data. The parse.xhtml shows the table that lists the events from the parser. And finally, our, um, our guide that holds it all together, our managed bean, which contains the data that, um, this is the default data over here, and the stuff, the setters, getters, what makes everything tick. So now that you get, get that, let's go ahead and start a Glacier server. Mine has already started. And go ahead and click build. Once it's built, let's go into our uh, Google Chrome and put this URL inside right here. 
And let's replace everything once again with Viprov programming. I am 16 and let's keep the zip code simple. Right adjacent and it's the exact same thing. And uh, when you parse it, it will be, uh, your tables will look exactly like this. A little bit different, but um, you get the gist. They do the exact same thing. They show um, they show it being converted into JSON da data and then parsing it into an object file, which is then read as a table format. And that wraps it up for today's tutorial, everybody. I hope you understand how JSON is incredibly useful in its text-based data exchange format and why it's widely used in many web services and derives itself from the JavaScript that we know and love. Now that you get that, let's go ahead to the next chapter, internalization and localization of web applications. I'll see you in the next video.